say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Donna Hoover, chaplain of the Sugar Creek, Missouri Police Department, will now deliver our invocation. Would you pray with me, please? Dear God in heaven, we've gathered to remember those that we have vowed that we would never forget. Those from the Independence Police Department and the Sugar Creek Police Department who have paid the ultimate price protecting our cities. We are so thankful too that we have one here with us today that we nearly lost. So we ask dear God that you be present with us today as we remember. We ask for a calm and a healing and a strength and a peace the kind that passes all understanding which means the kind of peace that comes from you, the kind that we sometimes don't understand. We pray in your holy name, and we thank you for your presence here today. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Again, welcome and thank you for being here on this most sacred day of remembrance. I'm Adam Dustman, and beha on behalf of President Steve Cook and the entire membership of the Fraternal Order of Police, Independence, Missouri Lodge Number 1, I have the honor once again serving as the MC for today's event. I want to begin by thanking those individuals that have worked hard on this year's service, but for their efforts, today would not be possible. First and foremost, the wonderful ladies of the Independence Fraternal Order of Police Auxiliary who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes putting on today's program and have been an integral part in all the planning, preparation, and everything that makes today a success. Thank you. Major Ed Turner, Captain Matt Klein from the Sugar Creek Police Department, Sergeant Matt Scholl in the Independence Missouri Police Color Guard and Honor Guard, Officer Matt McLaughlin, Officer Jody Grooms, Sergeant Daryl Schmidley, Detective Gabe Cole, and the Independence Missouri Police Department Volunteers and Police Service. Thank you all for making today possible. I would like to introduce the distinguished guests that are with us today. The surviving family from all of our fallen officers, you truly honor us with your presence here at each and every one of these ceremonies. Officer Tom Wagstaff and his wife Stacy Wagstaff. Retired Chief of Police Gary George. Voltage, an all-female barbershop quartet originating from the Kansas City Chorus of Sweet Adelines. They performed our national anthem and will be performing a special selection later in today's service. The Chief of the Independence Missouri Police Department, Brad Halsey. The Chief of the Sugar Creek Missouri Police Department, Chris Dole. The Mayor of the City of Independence, Missouri, the Honorable Eileen Weir. 
City Council members for the City of Independence, Missouri, the Honorable Mike Huff and the Honorable Karen DeLucci. City Alderman for the City of Sugar Creek, Missouri, the Honorable Stan Sagehorn and the Honorable Chuck Micklich. City Manager for the, Independent, for the City of Independence, Missouri, Zach Walker. Assistant City Manager for the City of Independence, Missouri, Mark Randall. Chief of the Independence, Missouri Fire Department, Doug Short, and all of the members of the Independence, Missouri Fire Department, we appreciate your attendance today. Retired Chief of Police for, the, for Independence, Missouri, Tom Daly. And Retired Deputy Chief of Police for Independence, Missouri, John Main. I'm sure there's many others that came in that I didn't see. And again, I apologize for missing you, but thank you very much with your presence as well. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy declared May 15th as National Peace Officers Day and this week as Police Week. According to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, last year there were 163 officers killed in the line of duty. So far in 2019, there have been 42 officers killed. This marks a 22% decrease from the same period last year. Of those 42 officers, 18 died as a result of a firearm. That is a 35% decrease over the same period last year. Today, at the National Peace Officer Memorial Service in Washington, D.C., President Donald Trump told all those in attendance, today we gather in the heart of our nation's capital. We come together to pay tribute to the American peace officers who made the supreme sacrifice, all in the line of duty, in many cases for people they had never met, people they did not know. We're here to remember their noble lives, to thank God for their profound courage, and to express our love, respect, and everlasting gratitude for the heroes of law enforcement. And that is what they are and were, the heroes of law enforcement. These words are so true and embody the reason we gather today. President Trump went on to say, you do not hear it nearly enough, but Americans across this country love you. They support you, they respect you more than you would ever know more than you would frankly ever think even possible. They have great respect for law enforcement and the job you do. Fortunately, we know how much we are supported here. The love and support across the Independence and Sugar Creek community for law enforcement is evident. From the cards, food, posters, well wishes and prayers, we are reminded almost every day how supportive this community is that we have the honor of serving. It cannot be understated how much this means to all of us. It is this support that helps carry us through when tragedy strikes. For the 163 officers last year, the 42 officers this year, their families, as well as the families of all of the fallen, it is that continued support that is needed most. Please join me in a moment of silence to honor those we have lost and their families. Thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, Independence, Missouri, Lodge Number 1, Detective Steve Cook. Thank you. On uh, behalf of Independence Lodge 1, I appreciate everybody's attendance today and the op opportunity to make a few brief comments. It's been said that uh, police departments are like families, and as such, it's extremely important that we're here together to honor those members of our police family who have sacrificed so much. No new officer ever dreams that their name would be added to a wall or that they would become disabled as a result of their police service. But all officers recognize that it's always a possibility that exists. And even with that all knowledge, they still answer that call every day when they put on their badge. I think Vice President Mike Pence said it best when he said police officers are the best of us. And I don't think you could say that any better than that. In addition, I would like to personally welcome Chief Gary George, who's not only an important part of the Independence Missouri Police Department family, but also what I kind of consider an extended part of my family. Uh, my father, many of you may know, was Chief of Police of Independence uh, in the past. Uh, he and Chief George worked together, coached Pop Warner football together. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him and with his family. And uh, I can't think of anyone better to honor us with their presence for such an important occasion and uh, to uh, speak for us. So I'd like to thank him for, for being here. Thank you.
Now it is my honor to introduce someone who knows what it means to lead when an officer is fighting for their life. He is a leader who serves with compassion not only for the officers he leads, but their families as well. It is my pleasure to introduce the Chief of the Independence Missouri Police Department, Chief Brad Halsey. Thank you. Uh, I want to welcome and thank the family and friends of the fallen heroes being recognized today who gave the ultimate sacrifice. I want to let the families know that although Police Memorial Day occurs only once a year, your loved one is remembered on a daily basis. You are and always will be a part of the IPD family. I know that this time of year can be very difficult for you while remembering your loved one. Our hearts and continued prayers remain with you today and always. I would like to extend my appreciation as well to the FOPA who have worked very hard to make this a successful event. The FOPA support to the members of the department is much appreciated, so thank you. I also want to extend my appreciation to members of the department and FOP who also have worked countless hours preparing for today's important ceremony to honor our heroes. To the men and women of the Independence Police Department and the volunteers, as I have stated time and time again, I am so proud to be part of such a great family and team. Your dedication and commitment to this department and community are above commendable. No matter what job you have within the department or volunteer hours you, or volunteer hours you provide, I appreciate each and every one of you. To the other first responders and attendants, thank you for your commitment to the community as well and taking the time to be here today. Lastly, I want to thank members of the community and businesses for your outstanding support of not only the police department, but the other first responders who serve the community as well. In closing, thank you again for being here to support and honor these heroes who gave the ultimate sacrifice. At this time, Independence Mayor, uh, Missouri Mayor Eileen Weir will come forward and present Chief Brad Halsey and Chief Chris Soule with a proclamation from the city. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today on this very special day. Um, it's my honor to be here this, this afternoon to represent the Independent City Council. Whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated May 15th of each year to be Police Memorial Day. And whereas our law enforcement officers are the guardians of life and property, defenders of the individual right to be free individuals and warriors in the battle against crime. And whereas our community desires to honor the valor, service, and dedication of its own police officers. And whereas the City of Independence has seen five officers killed in the line of duty. Henry Bugler, June 13th, 1866. John Swearingen, January 16th, 1884. George Barton, January 26, 1922. David Kraxner, October 31st, 1966. And Terry Foster, March 17th, 2001. And whereas also a part of the Independence Missouri Lodge No. 1 Fraternal Order of Police, the city of Sugar Creek has seen two officers killed in the line of duty. Mike Anka, February 5, 1968 and Anthony Novak, September 18, 1969. Now therefore, I, Eileen N. Weir, Mayor of the City of Independence, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the City of Independence, do hereby proclaim May 15, 2019 as Police Memorial Day in Independence and call upon all of our citizens to join me in expressing our appreciation to these officers who are willing to sacrifice their lives, if necessary, to guard us and our loved ones against all who violate the law. It is truly my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Chief Gary George. Chief Gary D. George has been serving the city of O'Fallon, Missouri as their interim chief of police since December 2018. Prior to that, he served the city of Alpharetta, Georgia as the director of public safety overseeing police, fire, and all emergency services from August 2001 through retiring in 2017. 
Prior to that, he served the Independence Missouri Police Department for over three decades in a variety of assignments. Chief George became a police officer in March 1970 and was promoted through the ranks serving as a patrol officer, detective, sergeant, captain, and as the assistant chief of police. In 1997, he was named as the chief of police for the city of Independence and served in that capacity through August 2001 when he retired and accepted the director's position in Alpharetta, Georgia. While serving as the chief of police in Independence, he was instrumental in chairing a 13-member police executive board of the Eastern Jackson County Drug Task Force, which supported the countywide quarter cent sales tax to fight the war on drugs. The chief also served on the board of the Western Missouri Regional Police Academy, which formed a partnership with the Metropolitan Community College in constructing the Western Missouri Police and Fire Academy. Chief George holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration and a master's degree in public administration from Park University in Parkville, Missouri. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy, the FBI Law Enforcement Executive Development Course, and Northwestern University School of Police Staff and Command. Chief George is an adjunct professor and has taught many courses in leadership, ethics, and statutory and constitutional law. Ladies and gentlemen, it is truly my honor to present to you Chief Gary George. Wow, I'm home. I tell you, it's a true honor today to be here and to be back home. It was March 2nd, 1970, when I started the Kansas City, Missouri Police Academy as, a, as an independence police officer. Just a couple years later, it seems like 32 years later to be exact, but it's just a couple years later, I retired here as the chief of police. August 1st of 2001. I took a police chief job, a director of public safety job in Alpharetta, Georgia. I was there 16 years. I love policing. I love policing in Georgia. Made many friends, but it was never home. This is home. All these brothers and sisters of the Independence Missouri Police Department. Today, um, you know, I've worked in the criminal justice system for nearly 48 years. Some of you know me. I see a lot of majors and deputy chiefs and captains out there that uh, were young officers when I left. They were kids. Today, I see a lot of, a lot of rank. They're running the place, running it well. But I've worked in this for so long that 48 years in a police uniform, three years in an army uniform. I guess I've worn a uniform a long time, uh, I, have to, I have to say. But back to why we're here today. We gather today in memory of those who have fallen while protecting our community and our great country. We gather to pay tribute to those law enforcement officers who gave their lives and died in the line of duty. To stand and to be at this police memorial today where we recognize and acknowledge the ultimate sacrifice that these officers paid, that unanticipated and unwelcomed end of watch. To me, the criminal justice system is like a long pole. On that pole is the criminal justice system, of course, the politicians, the courts, the Supreme Court, and on the very end of that pole, we put law enforcement. We put our police officers. And we're constantly yelling at those police officers, get in there, arrest that person, shoot that person, fix this problem, fix that problem, fix this, fix that, but don't screw it up. That's how, that's what, we're expected to do, but don't mess it up. On March 17th, 2001, Officer Terry Foster, Officer Vinnie Bass, a young officer here today, he's a captain, but a young officer at that time, and a brand new police lieutenant, Doug Poole, were on the end of that pole. 
They were responding to a home where a mentally challenged individual lived. Officer Terry Foster knew that man. He had been there December, January, and February. So why is March any different? We'll take care of this. And I know that Officer Foster felt that, you know what, he felt confident we'll handle this okay. But as I described, law enforcement is on the end of that pole. Officer Foster moved right up those steps to take custody of that mentally challenged individual. Right behind Officer Foster was Officer Bass. Right behind him, Lieutenant Doug Poole. We all know the sad, the sad outcome of that night. Officer Terry Foster was shot in the face and the head four times. Officer Terry Foster died that night. Debbie Foster, his wife, lost a husband. Kids lost a dad. Mom and dad lost a son. We lost a fellow officer and a great friend. I have to, I have to stop and just go back in memory that right in that police lobby, March 16th, 2001, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I came from City Hall from a meeting. Terry was in the lobby, and Larry and Terry goes, do you think we're going to get the L6? Terry Foster and I shared a birthday, April 10th. He goes, you think we're going to get the L6? Because if we do, I'm going to stay till July 1 when it comes in. If not, April 10th, I'm out the door. The very next evening, probably 30, 32, 34 hours later, Terry Foster was dead. I will never forget that. And although I was not a police officer then, as I was still in the military, but I've heard all the great stories of the Independence Police Lieutenant Dave Craxter and his tragic death on October 31, 1966. As a new independence police officer, when I first got here, I ran across a lot of officers who talked about all the great stories and what a great man Lieutenant Craxter was. But on October 31, 1966, Halloween, I guess, Lieutenant Craxter never went home. His wife lost a husband. His kids lost a father. His mother father and grandparents lost a son and a grandson. Again, the Independence Police Department lost a great friend. February 5th, 1968. Now, I never knew this gentleman. I was not an officer yet, but Chief of Police, Mike Conca, in Sugar Creek, shot to death by a gunman. What I'm proud to see today is that three of Mike Anka's grandsons are officers here. That's a wonderful tribute to your grandfather. On this memorial is five names. But there's faces to those names. These are men who never returned home from their line of duty as police officers. They never returned home to a loved one. No longer can they join their families for Thanksgiving dinner or to tuck a child into bed, say a silent prayer for that child when they tuck him into bed. And I realize this is probably a little out of order, but I talked to Chief Halsey about it this morning when we had breakfast that in my mind, and probably many of you that knew him, there should be another name on that memorial we can't go back and change that. But I'm speaking of former officer and friend, Officer Greg Woods. Officer Greg Woods was a decorated military veteran from the Vietnam War. He was a decorated military sniper. How many lives did, how, how many lives did Greg Woods take as a sniper in the military? It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with it. But what does matter that years later, as a police officer for the city of Independence, Greg Woods 
was on a call, barricaded subject, holding girlfriend and her son hostage at gunpoint. That happened in the early afternoon, mid-afternoon in February. Finally, the girlfriend got away. The boy, the, the son got out, finally got out of the house after mom. But the big deal was that the guy barricaded himself in the basement. Okay, fine. We'll wait him out. And that's what the officers were doing. Greg Woods was in the living room of the home. The guy's barricaded in the basement when suddenly this guy burst up the basement steps and immediately pointed a weapon at Officer Greg Woods. Greg Woods shot him. Shot him dead. Good shoot for the Independence Police. Prosecutor said good shoot. We all went about our business, went back to work. However, life was never the same for Greg Woods after that day. As we would recognize today, Greg Woods Greg Wood suffered from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We hear about it every day today. Greg was a great friend, thought the world of him, but we finally, it affected Greg to the point that we had to medically discharge him. I remember talking with Greg one day at his mother's house over at Sugar Creek, and he goes, Gary, every time I close my eyes, I see that man's face that I shot. Now, we know that this probably goes back to Vietnam and all, all he was involved in there, but it took that one instant to take him over the edge. A year later, Greg took his life, his own life, in the backyard of his mother's house over at Sugar Creek. I had to look at that as a line of duty death. In my mind, and I know in the many minds of the officers here back then, Dennis Green and I made sure that Greg Woods had a full-blown police funeral. The sad part, our chief at the, at the time said, not my fault, he's crazy. And he didn't even go to the funeral. How sad, how sad, his loss. But Greg Woods too left a family. Three daughters, a mother, a brother, and all of us. Been 24 years since, since, since Greg died. May he always be remembered. We read in the scriptures about greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his fellow man. To our chaplains, I love Matthew 5.12. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they, be, for they shall be called sons of God. Did God re write that for us? I believe so. I believe so. That's... This is why that today, this very day, we need men and women who ch need to choose a career of law enforcement, who choose to be police officers. We need law enforcement to stand in the breach and to keep our communities safe. So as we gather today to comfort the family and friends of the fallen, to memorialize their sacrifices and to public ac publicly acknowledge that they will never be forgotten. I'm honored today to be here, but I am more humbled to be here that I was asked to speak today. Thank you. May God bless each and every one of you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the memorial wreath by Chief Brad Halsey and Chief Chris Soul. We will now begin our roll call of heroes. For the Independence Missouri Police Department, Chief Brad Halsey. Henry Bugler, end of watch, June, June 13th, 1866. John Swearingen, end of watch, January 16th, 1884.
George Barton. End of watch, January 26th, 1922. David Kraxner, end of watch, October 31st, 1966. Terry Foster, end of watch, March 17th, 2001. For the Sugar Creek, Missouri Police Department, Chief Chris Soule. Mike Onka, end of watch, February 5th, 1968. Anthony Novak, end of watch, September 18, 1969. Please remain standing for our benediction, which will be delivered by Independence Missouri Police Chaplain Wayne Nelson, and will immediately be followed by the retirement of the colors, the firing of three volleys, and the playing of taps and Amazing Grace. Chaplain Wayne Nelson. Let us pray. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, what we have done here this afternoon is right and proper. 
And we would ask that your comfort would be extended in a continual manner to each of these families, to these police departments, Lord. We would pray that you would continue to provide for them peace of heart and mind as they remember this loved one that has given his life in a tremendous manner. It would also be right for us, Lord, at this time to think of the some 225 women and men who are serving the streets of Sugar Creek and Independence these very days, offering peace and protection to our communities. We would pray, O oh God, your protection on each one of them. We would pray that you would continue to give them wisdom, compassion for people. I pray, God, that you would watch over them in a marvelous way these days. We ask, God, you to continue to bless these cities. May your face shine upon each of them. Be gracious to us, Lord, in your own special way. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
I may have jinxed the wind and the rain, but just enough to let us know who's really in charge. So this concludes our service. Thank you all for attending. Have a safe and wonderful drive home.